What's up guys, it's your boy Benny. One of my favorite parts of this job is learning new words. This is a job that requires quite the vocabulary and the ability to pronounce things and the ability to have diction with certain words like gerontocracy. You ever heard of that word? It means rule of the old. It's actually a word that dates back to Socrates. The term from the ancient Greek means when the old and decrepit people that have nothing left to live for, who have lived horrible lives themselves, somehow gain power and won't give it up. And so when you see Mitch McConnell, who's over the age of 80, Joe Biden, who's over the age of 80, Chuck Schumer, who's 79, Nancy Pelosi, who's 82, Klaus Schwab, who's 85, and George Soros, who's 93 years old, when you see these people running everything, you start to say, oh, wait up, hold up. Maybe this is a bad idea. Some of the smartest people who ever lived thought it was a terrible idea. Socrates argued that gerontocracy is how societies collapse. And maybe that's why you're seeing the collapse at hand in our country. We saw a tweet from this weekend that popped up showing George Soros in one of his um, little speeches to the World Economic Forum blathering and bloviating on about climate nonsense. Yet here you can see George Soros kind of have like a stroke, right? Like we've covered what happens with Mitch McConnell where he just out of blanks or he starts to like slur his words or he like looks off in the middle distance. Same thing happens with Joe Biden. And this clip really shocked us, sort of shows you uh, the mental state of the people who are suddenly running everything all of the sudden. Check this out. The melting of the in Greenland ice sheet affects uh, 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 acid uh, 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 um, uh, would increase the level of the oceans by seven meters. That poses a threat to the survival of our, of our civilization. So, listen, I despise George Soros's politics. I loathe the things that he stands for. I think they've made the world and intend to make the world a far worse place for every person on earth to live. I don't ever wish anyone harm, but I have to state on a bipartisan level, it is utterly cruel, actually, regardless of what you stand for, to push somebody who is so feeble and so collapsing in their health and in their ability to comprehend things. And also, by the way, it's easy to trick these guys, right? If they have such a collapsed brain, this is why they're able to get whatever they want done under Joe Biden's regime. Joe Biden doesn't have the cognitive capacity to fight anyone anymore. So he just ram through people like George Soros' son, Alexander Soros, can just ram through any kind of crackpot, leftist, socialist, communist, Marxist, utopia garbage that you could possibly ask for. This is how this stuff gets done, actually, because we do have a gerontocracy. You have a rule of the old. These guys aren't sharp, and they're making a far worse world for all of us, a world that they'll never have to live in. Right? If you're 93, you're just not, get, just the way it goes, okay? You're lucky to even live to 93. You're just not going to live in the world that you're creating right now, okay? The future generations, you're not going to see it. So it's actually a horrible incentive for people as old as George Soros, Mitch McConnell, or Joe Biden to be in office because their decisions they will never have to live with. The policies they push and enact, they will never have to live with. Now, in case you need a little roundup of what we've seen lately, here's Mitch McConnell straight up having a stroke on camera, just like you watched George Soros do. What are my thoughts about what? Running for re-election in 2026. Oh. That's a... <clears throat> Did you hear the question, Senator? Running for re-election in 2026? All right, I'm sorry, you all. We're going to need a minute. Senator. Penny. Yep. 
Okay. Somebody else have a question? Please speak up. Bipartisan cooperation and a string of Say anything else to the press? Let's go back to you. Go ahead, John. And here's Joe Biden doing the exact same thing. Would you let these guys run an ice cream stand? Would you let these guys like they're running like the biggest economies in human history? Five, six trillion dollar economy per year is what Joe Biden's running and Mitch McConnell's running and George Soros is running. You wouldn't let these guys run your Fortune 500 company, much less the pop stand or the lemonade stand at the end of the block made out of cardboard. Yet here's the resident of the White House. I hope this experience for the speaker has been one of a personal revelation. I'm not being facetious. I, uh, um, anyway. So ladies and gentlemen, as we have uh, noted, Alexander Soros is the 30, now 38 year old son of George Soros, who has been handed the reins in his first interview with his successor, Alex, Alex Soros says the family's $25 billion philanthropic enterprise will boost its support for voting and abortion rights. Oh joy. I'm more political says Alexander Soros. You can see here on the open society foundation, the, uh, possibly the most evil organization on planet earth. You have George Soros and then you have Alexander Soros, who's the chair of the board of directors. Alexander Soros has been in Davos. You can see here on his Instagram, Alexander Soros is in Davos meeting world leaders. Here's uh, the uh, president of Ireland. This guy's uh, in charge of Poland now. They're doomed. There you go. Here's a uh, Democrat senator, Chris Coons. Here's Sidney McCain. Oh, yeah. And a bunch of others. So, yeah, you can see Alex Soros on his ex account bragging about his meetings. Uh, with Moldovian prime minister, with the uh, president of Ireland, the prime minister of Ireland, various other leaders here with the uh, Belarusian opposition. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Look, 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 really, really great people. Truly. The German Green Party. It's a, pretty much what you'd expect, right? A... Uh, Here's the pre new president of Poland. So Poland is completely screwed. It's over for you guys. Very sorry to say. Prime Minister of Belgium, Chris Coons, Democrat Senator. In case you're wondering. Oh, and there we go. Cindy McCain. Hey, John McCain's uh, old battle axe wife. So here we go. There's Cindy McCain. Great. Just a reminder. She was supposed to be first lady in 2008. We were we were supposed to elect her. And now she's she was going to be the Republic, the wife of the Republican president, John McCain. Remember that? Just in case you're wondering, like, how much of a, a sh smoke and mirrors uh, hand puppet game it is with the Republican Party. Just what Muppets these people are. Cindy McCain is supposed to be the first lady, Republican first lady. And here she is sitting on George Soros's son's lap talking about like the how great globalism is and more vaccine lockdowns please more global currencies and open borders what frauds tell you what uh, Alexander Soros and I do agree with on one thing though Alexander Soros says Trump it, win in is a done deal for the Davos elite but they're always wrong so this is quite interesting so the headlines that are being made here is that Alexander Soros says Donald Trump is already the president in Davos, says George Soros heir. And that's a good thing because, well, because they're always wrong, right? So he's effectively uh, repeating what we've been covering all week, which is that Donald Trump's 
shadow is looming quite large over the Davos gathering, and it is so unbelievably delicious to watch. Uh, Alexander Soros also giving his own speech at the Davos gathering, uh, talking about as well as his father did when he was stroking out. <laughs> But um, you know, I um, I don't think that that's the I don't think that that's the fundamental I don't think the technology is the fundamental issue uh, in in democracy. Democracy is messy. I mean, you know, democracy is about contestation of ideas. It's about uh, plurality. Um, it's about people having different truths. Actually, now, mm. um, fundamentally, uh, how society lives together. Um, civically, um, in those in those contestations, um, is you know is obviously uh, is obviously um, you know quite uh, quite uh, you know quite tricky. But I think that if we play too much on this disinformation card, we're taking responsibility away from ourselves to actually create a narrative that inspires people to vote and to believe uh, you know in um, uh, in uh, in democracy and democratic um, institutions. None of the institutional Part, I think that we can talk about uh, institutions as these abstract things, but institutions are also about people. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, um, you know, we just heard this, this this point about untrustworthy people, and we talked about things in the United States like you know, like um, checks and balances, which aren't written anywhere, but are customs. And one man, Donald Trump, literally came in and just took that you know took that took that all away. Um, you know, so. Um, you know, so, um, you know, but when I see this, what are you talking about? So checks and balances, Donald Trump came in and took checks and balances away. You impeached him like twice. You and your people impeached him twice. Nancy Pelosi has plenty of photos of this guy. Like the, the Soros is literally run the Democrat party. What are you in checks and balances? Like checks and balances, like Democrats got the Senate and the house in 2008, 18. And so that's what a check and balance is. Donald Trump lost a lot of stuff in the Supreme Court, in the courts. That's how it goes. That is checks and balances. What he's talking about here is we don't get to do everything we want because we can't control every, we didn't control all of it. That's the goal. The goal is total control, right? And that's what's pan making these people panic, right? It is what's, why, why headlines like these are so un unbelievably delicious. Trump is already the president in Davos, but they're always wrong. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, the most powerful banker in the world, Jamie Dimon, who, who is a Democrat, straight, I think, right? Like Democrat donor, Democrat adjacent, runs the biggest bank in America called JP Morgan Chase. Uh, he's straight up saying at Davos, this is probably what Alexander Soros is talking about, straight up saying like, uh, yeah, hey guys, Donald Trump did a lot of really good things. So we're going to, we're going to, we there we should like maybe not demonize 75 million Americans Donald Trump doing good things in our country watch we've got this great hand but when people say MAGA they're actually looking at people voting for Trump and they think they're voting and they're basically scapegoating them that you are like him uh, and but I don't think they're voting for Trump because his family values now if you look just take a step back be honest he was kind of right about NATO kind of right about immigration mm -hmm. He grew the economy quite well. China, Trade, China ta virus. Tax reform worked. Mm -hmm. He was right about some of China. I don't. Th I don't like no, what he did. No, I said China virus. Yeah, I understand. When he, when he, yeah. he may have been right. He, he, and I don't like how he said things about I Mexico. I don't like. But he wasn't wrong about some of these critical issues, and that's why they're voting for him. And and I think people should be a little more respectful of our fellow citizens. And when you guys have people up here, you should, have, you should always ask the why. Not like it's a binary thing. You're supporting right. Trump. You're not supporting Trump. Why are you supporting Trump? It's hard to Trump? hate 75 million of your fellow Americans. And it's, I, I agree. It's done crazy. And, and you know, the it. Democrats have done a pretty good job with the deplorables, not, hugging onto their Bibles and their beer and their guns. I mean, really? Like, can we just stop that stuff and actually grow up and treat other people with respect and listen to them a little bit? Jimmy, and, uh, and I do think the economy will affect. And right. I think this, this negative talk about MAGA is going to hurt Biden's election campaign. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, we wish harm on no one. We wish retirement on the vast majority. We wish early or forced retirement on the vast majority of our globalist elite uh, or political class. It's time for a new generation uh, and a generation of people who can I don't know, like string together a sentence. How about that? Okay. Who aren't incontinent. Who don't crap themselves when they go up a flight of stairs. Who don't need the, the, the baby stairs to get on Air Force One. Those kind of people. There you go. It's your boy, Benny. Like, share, and subscribe for a better world.
a world not run by a gerontocracy. See ya.